I'm asking you, can you get back to you? Can you get back to the you that your partner fell in love with? Have you lost yourself? Have you gotten so caught up in being a husband or wife, a boyfriend or girlfriend, a partner, half of a couple, that you lost all of who you are? Because if you can't be 100% of who you are and be half of a couple at the same time, something's gone wrong. You should be able to be an individual and still be half of a couple. If you lose your individuality, the price is too high. The relationship is dysfunctional. You've got to reclaim who you are. And that's who your partner fell in love with. And you can say, well, I got that beat out of me. My partner took that away from me. Well, no, they didn't. I'll get to that in a minute. But they didn't fall in love with who you are now. They fell in love with who you were then. So don't we need to get back to that? Robin and I have joked sometimes. She'll say, you know, I wish you were more sensitive or I, I wish you were more emotional. And I said, well, you married a linebacker. Doesn't mean I can't work to be those things, but you kind of knew who I was when you married me. I was pretty cerebral and had a pretty violent job at the time. I mean, that's who I was and what I did. I mean, I was a jock. I was a jock then. I'm a jock now. I mean, it's 48 years later and I do sports every day, seven days a week. I did them then. I do them now. It's who I am. And she has been so supportive in me being who I am. She really has not tried to change me into being who she might at different times think she wishes I was. Now, look, that doesn't mean you can't modify yourself. You can't grow. You can't evolve. Certainly you can. My God, we've been married 43 years. That has not been one year 43 times over. We've been married a second year, a third year, a fourth year, a fifth year, and the fifth year wasn't like the first year, and the tenth year wasn't like the fifth year. We have evolved. You don't ever want to have one year's experience 43 times. You want each year to build on the one before. So, of course, you evolve, but you never lose your roots. You never lose your identity. And when I say get back to you, I want you to make a commitment to yourself that you're going to live with integrity, honesty, compassion, and you're going to do it in a way that you generate enthusiasm, that you're your own best friend. Now, your partner's going to be your best friend as well, but you've got to be a good friend to yourself. You know, I always tell people, you're the easiest person to tell yourself no. You're the easiest person to say no to. You know, you can make a dentist appointment. You can make an appointment to meet somebody for lunch. You can make an appointment to see a therapist. You can make an appointment to do 10 different things. And when it comes time to have me time, you've got five things to do that day. Time runs short. Who's the easiest person to cancel on? You. You're the easiest person to cancel on, right? It's easier to cancel on yourself than it is to call the dentist and say, I'm not coming. It's easier to tell yourself, well, I'll just do this tomorrow instead of calling your therapist and say, I'm not coming, or calling your mother and say, well, I'm not going to come over and see you. It's easier to tell yourself no. It shouldn't be, but it is, because then you avoid confrontation. And what I'm saying is, if you're your own best friend, then you won't cancel on you. You wouldn't cancel lunch with your best friend if they were counting on it. And if you're your own best friend, then you wouldn't cancel on you. You wouldn't cancel things that are important to you. You wouldn't settle for less. You wouldn't settle for living with less than integrity and honesty and compassion and enthusiasm. So we talked about the bad spirit. I want to talk about the good spirit. I want to talk about the things that you can do to make your relationship better. And the first one is to own your relationship. Own your relationship. You are not a victim. You can say, well, I'm married to a jerk. I'm in a relationship with somebody that's just impossible. I'm a victim here. Dr. Phil, you don't know this person. They're impossible. They're the most miserable human being on the face of the earth. This is ground zero for miserable. I'm married to the worst person in the world. They find something wrong with everything. Well, okay, that's your victim story. But you've got to own that relationship. You created this relationship. You picked this person. And whatever is going on in this relationship, you either elicited it, maintain it, or allow it. You're not a victim. You either elicit, maintain, or allow what's going on in your relationship. You are the architect of your thoughts, your thought patterns, your behaviors. 
Whatever your partner's bad habits are, you need to ask yourself, what do you do to pay them off for that? If they are constantly late, if you're going somewhere, you're meeting someone for dinner, or you have a reservation somewhere, and they are chronically late, I mean, it's a fight every time. You make a reservation somewhere, you're going to be there at 7.30, and 7.30, you're ready to go, and they're not, and you leave at 8.15 every time, and so you are mad every time, you are arguing every time. You need to ask yourself what you're doing to elicit, maintain, or allow that behavior because you are not a victim. You are doing something to enable that behavior. You are paying them off for that behavior. So instead of asking yourself, what is wrong with them that they do this, you need to ask yourself, what am I doing to reinforce this behavior on their part? Look at your role. Now, you may say, look, why are you blaming this on me? I'm not the one that's late. I'm not blaming it on you. I'm saying you're the only one you have control over. You're the only one that you have input to. You need to own your relationship. Take off the victim hat, put it on the shelf, and become an owner, an owner of your relationship. If your partner is just unplugged, what are you doing that elicits, maintains, or allows that? How are you paying them off for being unplugged? Are you allowing them to be lazy? Are you failing to engage? Have you given up? What are you doing to enable that behavior? Enable means I make it easier for them to do something by my conduct. Own your relationship. You're not a victim. What are you doing to elicit that behavior? What are you doing to maintain it? What are you doing to allow it? Take control. Confront the situation. Own your relationship. Quit blaming your partner for it and own it. If you're so smart, if you're so right, then why can't you fix it? You can. You can fix it by owning it. What's the second thing you can do? You can accept the risk of being vulnerable. Now, this is really important. If your relationship is not working exactly the way you want it to, then you've gone into protective mode. You put your dukes up. You got your fist out in front of you. You're ready to fight because you don't trust your partner. They've hurt you. And so you start playing the what-if game. Well, I'm not going to expose myself. I'm going to let myself feel again, love again, be exposed again. Because what if they betray me again? What if they lie to me again? What if they cheat on me again? What if they get cold on me again? What if I do what you're saying, Dr. Phil? What if I become vulnerable again? What if I put it on the line again and they let me down again? Look, I really don't mind you playing the what-if game in a relationship. I really don't. As long as you play it out to the end. If you're going to ask the question, what if? What if they betray me? What if they lie to me? What if they let me down? Okay, I don't mind you playing that game. As long as you answer the question. If you say, what if they let me down? Then answer the damn question. What if they do? Are you going to explode? Are there going to be hair, teeth, and eyes all over the wall? Are you just going to explode because they lied to you again? Well, no. Of course you're not. You didn't last time. Did it hurt? Yes. Were you upset? Yes. Are you still here? Yes. Did you die? No. I've told you before two things. Number one, never invest more than you can afford to lose. I hear these things. People say, it just devastated me. It just killed me. No, it didn't. It didn't devastate you. It didn't kill you. It just broke my heart. No, it didn't. It hurts you. But it didn't kill you. You know how I know it didn't kill you? Because you're still listening to me. You're not dead. You're still here. The other thing I've told you is that language is very powerful. If you use words like horrible, devastated, killed, those come with a lot of power. So it was just horrible. You know, she lied to me. She cheated me. It just destroyed me. It just devastated me. Well, no, it didn't. Your kidneys are still working. Your heart's still beating. You're upset. It hurts your feelings. And two years from now, you'll be with somebody and you'll look back and say, oh my God, if she hadn't cheated on me, I'd have never met this person who I am head over heels in love with. It's funny how things work. If the person hadn't cheated on me and left me, then I'd have never met this person that I love more than life itself. So 
that was actually a blessing. I'm so glad that happened because now I've met this person. Does it hurt? Yes. Is it okay? No, it's not okay. I'm not trying to trivialize it. Nothing matters. Yes, it matters. Of course it matters. Does it have gravity? Yes, it has gravity. But it's bad enough without you catastrophizing it with your language. Accept the risk of vulnerability. If you say, what if I say, okay, I'm, I'm going to get emotionally invested again. I'm going to approach them again. I'm going to show affection again. I'm, I'm going to engage again. What if they just turn a cold shoulder to me again? Well, okay, what if they do? Then you'll try something else. Or maybe you'll eventually have enough and say, that's it. I'm out of here. I'm not going to spend the rest of my life beating my head against the wall. But you will survive. Accept the risk of vulnerability and accept the fact that you will survive. The third thing you've got to do is accept your partner. And that means you've got to stop focusing on the negatives. You've got to take the chip off your shoulder. You have to realize that you don't have to react to everything you can react to. Just because they do something that you can justify being upset about, you can justify being hurt about, you can justify being wounded by, doesn't mean you have to be. You, know, you can make a joke out of it. You can choose to tease them about it. Pain is the price that you pay for resisting the natural order of things. There is a natural order of things. There's just a certain way people are going to be. Like I said, Robin's very emotional. I love that about her. She's so much fun in that regard, and she gets so excited about things. It just fills up the room, and it's great when our kids were growing up, and it's great now with our grown kids and our grandkids. She gets so excited about things, and it just brings a texture to life that's really, really nice. I'm much more cerebral. I just kind of think about things, and I might have a great sense of satisfaction inside, but I don't do the happy dance like Snoopy in the Peanuts cartoons. She'll sometimes turn around and say, give me something. Come on. I mean, it's like you won the lottery or something. Give me something. Jump up and down. Throw caution to the wind and break into a smile. She teases me about it. But she doesn't resist the natural order of things because she knows that that's just the way I am. I'm kind of reserved in that way. I was raised by an alcoholic father in a very combative situation, and I kind of have emotions that are a little more constricted. That's just the natural order of things. So she knows that, and she'll redo something in the house and say, okay, come in and look at this. All right, close your eyes. Now, open your eyes. What do you think? And I'll look at it and say, oh, yeah, I think I might like this. It's like, oh, God, do you like it or do you not? Well, after about 10 years, she's learned it'll take about a week for him to kind of think about it and look at it and live with it a while. And he'll sit in the room a while, look around and stuff. And then, you know, in about a week, he'll tell me, I really like this. This really feels good. I really like this. And when he says it, he'll really mean it. But he's not going to just jump up and down and go, oh, wow, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen in my whole life. That's just not the natural order of things for me. And she's been great about accepting that. So ask yourself, do you accept your partner and their natural way of being in the world? And you know, you don't have to love everything about somebody to love them. You can love what they do in certain situations and not love what they do in others, but you can still love them. I love that she gets so excited about things. And if by my yardstick it would be too excited, that's just by my yardstick. It's not by hers. So I accept her and her emotionality, and she accepts me and my analytical approach. And between us, it's a pretty good balance. So ask yourself, what can I do to accept my partner and the natural order of things the way they naturally are, instead of criticizing the fact that they aren't the way you are? Because like I said, Robin's very different from me. I don't want her to be just like me. I did not want our kids to grow up with two me's. I wanted them to grow up with a Robin and a Phil. And I certainly didn't want to be married to me. I don't want to be married to somebody that looks at things the way I look at them, thinks about things the way I look at them, reacts to things the way I react to them. How boring would that be if you were married to somebody that thought, felt, acted, reacted exactly the way you do. God, how boring would that be? That'd be terrible. 
You don't want that. You want them to be different. So accept your partner. Find things about them that you can focus on that are positive. 